This is Hollywood. Matthias Bombell with you. From May 24 comes a small indie comedy, Obvious Child, with actress Jenny Slate in the title role of a 20-something angst-ridden young woman who has an unwanted and unexpected pregnancy, which forces her to face the reality of adult womanhood for the first time. She's a very bright woman of emotional quickness who, like the symptoms of Asperger syndrome, carries on an ongoing, non-stop, self-focused monologue through the entire 84-minute feature. She is also a stand-up comic of low humor of a very direct and picaresque nature, and it is there that we first see her in a New York City cellar comedy club making jokes about her female body functions. Her boyfriend decides to call it quits and admits that he's been seeing someone else, which makes her even more maudlin and whiny to her friends, family, and us in the audience. Upset at her separation, she channels her anger in waiting by his apartment to see if he's with the other girl. This is perhaps the most real scene in the movie, as she plays a time-killing game with herself, in which she agrees she'll leave whether or not the boyfriend comes out of his apartment door if a car should pass by within the next two minutes, which it does, and then she says to herself and us, as she's constantly talking, well, I'll wait until the next pedestrian goes by, and if they are a woman and they cross the street, I'll leave then. Of course, just this happens, and she stays, waiting to think up another excuse for her non-violent stalking. It is the best moment in the entire movie. Sure, the low humor gets lots of laughs, and this movie, more than any other I've seen, has the most contemporary-sounding slang dialogue, which makes it hip for the moment, but will date this movie very quickly as popular catchphrases change in the vernacular. Here, she decides to drunk dial her ex. Hi, Ryan. I don't know if you're getting my messages, but I really would need to I mean, talk. <laughs> hey. Sorry, I didn't hear the, I didn't, I, I don't care about the beep. <laughs> I am also Sorry that you cannot get to the phone. Uh... Turn on that suit and lend me that costume. Kate has HPV, the kind of HPV where you get warts on your stuff and um, ovarian cancer. There's a lot of other stuff I could say, but I'm a lady and then she dies of cancer and you're stuck with the bill, so... I just wanted to apologize for the voicemail that I just left on your voicemail. And um, I also wanted to say, psych! <laughs> Have a great life! I'll be here with my normal HPV that one in four nice women have. Um, there will not be an apology message for this apology message. Goodbye. <laughs> But it's not goodbye! That scene looks like the production crew's highlight reel of a five-hour acting improv. In this case, it would have been great off-Broadway theater, but fails here on the screen, appearing as a collection of the funniest improvisations cut together quickly and masked slightly by a, a little bit of a music bed of a popular tune. She finds a nice boy named Max, played by actor Jack Lacey, from the Midwest by chance one night and takes him to bed, only to find out that she is pregnant with his child shortly after. How she deals with him and her condition is how the movie concludes. I will say that Miss Slate is a very capable and bright actress, able to deliver fast dialogue but I found her role without merit is written as she seemed to whine constantly and never cared for anyone beyond herself. It's hard to relate to an unlikable character, and without that concern or engagement from the viewer, you will not care what happens in the narrative. Yes, Obvious Child is a... 
Real Stinkeroo. This is your pal, Matthias Bombal, bidding you a fond farewell.